Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are on planet Earth. It's a turbulent, fast forward, paralyzed planet full of hope and tragedy at the same time. And this is a time when uh, communities have never had to play a more important role in solving a global problem because uh, local decisions are all part of the path toward uh, slowing the pa this pandemic and also on t in terms of racial equity and if we're not all thinking about um, creating a landscape of opportunity for everybody, then we're kind of stuck. So I'm really glad you're here with us this morning. Please pass this around to friends and family and uh, others who you think need to take a break from the talking heads. This is the no talking heads, uh, although I'm talking briefly, uh, iteration of Sustain What. Sustain What is a four times a week webcast from the Earth Institute at Columbia and from my home here in the Hudson Valley, the Hudson Highlands in New York. And uh, my dog's saying hello, too. Uh, Going to have a great batch of friends and uh, creators here with you today, sharing stories and songs. Chi Ho Han from across the river in Newburgh, who's a masterful guitar maker to the stars and non-stars, and who's also a really great songwriter and uh, performer. David Ross and Patrick Jones, you can see, uh, are in the studio. Um, we've got an artist coming on to give a tour of his work at a Seattle Glassworks um, workshop. And, and more. So good morning. I'm going to start with a little anthem that Reggie uh, Harris debuted on this show a few weeks back, well, actually in, in May, even before the uh, turmoil in the streets. And I think it's just worth uh, waking up the morning with that. Weeks ago. Hopefully you can hear. Chino, if you can hear it, nod your head. Until the storm is over, we will not lay this burden down. We will keep each other strong. We will love and carry on till we stand all together on solid ground. We will not rest until the storm is over. Hey, we will not lay this burden down. We will keep each other strong we will love and carry on till we stand all together on solid ground it's been a long hard journey on a winding road so many have gone before us they carried a heavy load but they went there singing as they made their way and it's in their footsteps we follow as we work Today we will not rest till the storm is over. Hey, we will not lay this burden down. We will keep each other strong. We will love and carry on till we stand all together on solid ground. I know that you're weary. We all feel the pain. The actions of the world will try us all again, but I know there's a better day and it's coming our way that's why we're raising our voices as we work today we will not rest oh till the storm is over yeah, we will not lay this burden down we will keep each other strong we will love and carry on we stand all together solid ground all around us there's hatred all around us there's fear violence touches our lives and the message is clear we mourn our martyrs in our hearts they'll stay then we'll sing we shall overcome and go on our way we will not rest until the storm is over yeah, we will not lay this burden down yeah we will keep each other strong we will love and carry on till we stand all together on solid ground till we stand all together on solid ground no. so that was that was an amazing magical moment oh my gosh <laughs> so beautiful uh, i just can't believe i'm so it's thankful still. to be able to he uh, and Reggie has such an incredible backstory. His family, he is a descendant of one of the statue, one of the statued people down in the South. Uh, uh, Wickham, Robert uh, Wickham, whose statues are being taken down uh, and a slave were um, in Reggie's ancestry. And he's reconvened with some of the family members on the white side of his family 
and amazing stories there. So just Google for Wickham and Reggie Harris. You'll find uh, some extraordinary kinds of conversations going on. This morning, I've got in the studio already, we've got Shiho Han in Newburgh, New York, and David Ross and Patrick Jones over on the other side of the river. Great to see you here. Shiho, you're, you're a newcomer to the show. You're not a newcomer to, uh, to uh, my local community of musicians. And I also see Andre Kodrescu is with us from Queens, New York, and uh, a global citizen, if ever there was one. Uh, so how are you all doing, first of all? Chiho, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Andy. Yeah, I'm a newcomer, but I'm a, I'm a fan. I, I watch the uh, various podcasts you do, so it's, it's great to be here. Appreciate great. it. And Claudia Gibson and others are coming on in a little bit, uh, the artist Joseph Rosano. Uh, so Chiho, what's a song you want to share? Uh, that, that, that It doesn't have to be about the moment, mm. but something that's <laughs> relevant know. to the moment. That'd be great to hear. Um, I can try one um, that uh, that I started playing in Beacon, actually, um, at the uh, Town Crier. And uh, it's a song called Come Again. Um, it's about just sort of a moment uh, being in New York City. Uh, awesome. Here it goes. Here it goes. I see you run around Hear another cow Tired, pretty altar Hand me down Going underground And feeling like a hole Flying through the darkness Under soul To a reel, your heart is letting go. The room is spinning, white lights all the glow. Feeling like a child, nothing going wrong. Leaving on a well lit avenue. sweet very sweet thank you sweet and tight you know i I'm, i kind of write these short songs too and i i don't like to pad things out that's a beautiful snapshot 
Very cool. I'm trying to eliminate all solos and breaks. <laughs> <laughs> just to, just get to it. Well, you can fit those in in the live shows and stuff of yeah. when, they, when the time is right. Could you just tell folks about the guitars you make? Sure. Um, I make electric guitars, and um, I've been doing about 15 years now uh, professionally. Um, my shop is currently in Newburgh. I've been there for a few years, and uh, solid body, solid body guitars, um, uh, pretty straightforward, um, pretty simple, uh, straightforward aesthetic to the guitars, and uh, um, I guess that's about it. Well, that's great. It's yeah. uh, and there's some pretty cool people seem to like them. I think uh, I'll just show you. Here we go. I recognize that guy. <laughs> This is a great show. It's so <laughs> <laughs> we can go through all kinds of stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I got a. I got. I've had really. I started uh, the guitar uh, making sort of out of with no real uh, lineage. Um, I didn't work at Fender or Gibson or anything like that. I just thought for some reason I could do it. I tell people, uh, you know, I started from a series of bad decisions. I, <laughs> I decided to do this and. Um, and then right from the beginning, I had a lot of good fortune. Um, the guitars were good, but then, uh, you know, a lot of really great players started playing them. Um, so I had Walter Becker, wow. the late Walt Walter Becker. He was a big uh, uh, supporter of my work. And uh, there's Jim Campolongo there. And um, the, the Patrick Stanfield Jones is another one. I know. He'll um, remember him in a minute. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite musicians in the world. And um Me too. Uh, so it's uh, it's been great, you know. It's uh, it's something that I'm I'm proud of doing. Um, I feel it's sort of um, maybe morally neutral, if not positive, you know, mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's been good to me. That's great. Mm -hmm. So David Ross and Patrick Stanfield Jones, how are you doing in Beacon? You guys are isolated. You're basically in the same biological bubble now, so you can. <laughs> well, we. We've been really careful for the last several months. And then over the last couple of weeks, we've been gingerly beginning to play together here. Pretty soon we'll we look forward to the day when you'll be here, Andy, and Chiho, you'll be here. And uh, maybe even Andre will come up. And uh, you know, we'll get those town crier gigs started again. Yeah, if, oh, man, the town crier, the, they need so much help. They yeah, well, we all need to support the crier, you know, and uh, Phil's uh, yeah. really going through a tough time. I noticed Jeff, Jeff Daniels is doing a, an online. Um, yeah, on the 26th, you know, then for, for we the should, uh, if, if you can support the crier, if you live anywhere in this area, you should support them. It's yeah. a really important organization. Anyhow, um, do you guys we, have a um, tune in mind? We've got a couple of tunes in mind. The yeah. first one we want to do is, um, is, a, is, um, is kind of on theme. It's uh, the, the Dylan song, License to Kill. Great. Ready, Matt? Yep. One. Two, three. Things gone, he rules the earth. He can do it as he pleases, and if things don't change soon, he will. Oh, man has invented his doom. First step was touching the moon. Now there's a woman on my block. She just sits there. The night grows still, and she says, Who's gonna take away his license to kill?
But now they take him and they teach him and they groom him for life and they set him on a path where he's bound to get ill. Then they bury him with stars. They sell his body like they sell used cars. But there's a woman on my block and she just sits there facing the hill and she says, who's gonna take away his license to kill? And now he's hellbent for destruction. He's afraid and confused and his brain has been mismanaged with great skill. All he believes are his eyes, and his eyes just tell him lies. But there's a woman on my block, she just sits there in a cold chill, and she says, who's gonna take away his license to kill? Maybe a noise maker, spirit maker, heartbreaker, backbreaker, leave no stone or turn. Maybe an actor in a plot that may be all that you got to your lesson you surely learn. Now he worships at an altar of a stagnant pool. And when he sees his reflection, he's fulfilled. Oh, man is opposed to fair play. He wants it all and he wants it his way. But there's a woman on my block. She just sits there, the night grows still. And she says, who's gonna take away his license to kill? It wasn't so apt, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tough time. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's um. You know, sometimes this song comes back to me as one that that was um a little bit too apt for its and a way ahead of its time. You know, um, yeah. just thinking about what we're doing every day, every day, even during this pandemic. I mean, the the silver lining. I'm sure you're on this, Andy, since all that work you did in India is how those coal fires in India have kind of diminished it's, and the air is cleaner, but at what cost? Well, yeah, and it's complicated in India. A lot of that pollution, a third of it is indoor household pollution from women cooking on on wood and crap. And, uh, you know, the less access to the grid, the more of that, too. It's a complicated world. And, and think about how that indoor pollution complicates with COVID-19, too. Uh, and there are the scientists haven't even caught up with that yet. I've been trying to badger scientists who about the impact of indoor air pollution and COVID-19 risks together. And it's like a big uh, knowledge gap. There's all these knowledge gaps around this issue. So yeah. we're going to avoid the talking heads part. I use the hashtag no talking heads <laughs> okay. on this, for this morning. You know, we have to talk a little bit. And there are words that come out of people's mouths like those from Andre, who yeah. which are words. He is talking, but it's poetry. And and it has a different context than a lot of the blather you hear right now. Like this morning on all the talk shows, it'll just be blather, blather, yell, yell. So Andre, can you cut through that a little bit? What's what's it on your heart this morning? Yeah, unmute him. Oh, sorry. Many apologies. Uh, Muting my, a poet is a terrible crime. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes it's good. Um, my friend Larry had a dream last night that uh, capitalism ended and it was all because of a jumpsuit. And um, jumpsuit. 
I tried to figure the mystery by uh, looking at this book I wrote called So Recently Rent a World, which rent stands for ripped, <laughs> torn. So Recently Rent a World, and I opened it to a poem that explained what Larry's dream was all about. And it's called uh, Slotatopia, from a, like a slot machine, a utopia of slot machines. Wow. Heavy coins roll down hallways. We chase them and we catch them but can't lift them, let alone spend them. But spend them we do, beforehand, in advance, leaving an arm, an eye, with a man who has just given birth to a novel he hasn't yet seen and does not intend to read. It's there, behind him, bursting with imaginary uses. It is unreadable. It is full of eyes and hands. When the age of genius occurs, and the future pays dividends, and all those men who jump from windows on Wall Street rise from the sidewalk holding a new paradox, but no structural mask for the bloody mess they present to the startled pedestrians. When the lowly bureaucrat sheds his tweed and her pleats and cries for worms in many languages or leaves, and everyone undresses, a man's bird's worms are buttons on a rabbit girl's wings. When the dead and the near dead and those who are about to die eat of the light and stream naked from the hills into mailboxes, they fill them with feathers and fur and give off much speech to fill many years, which thank them, thank you, day and night with increasing gusto. When all the modest spelunkers and the hunters and the money collectors return from their caves, stand up from their feasts, rise through the roofs of their banks, and come to us in the timely air bubble, oxygenated pathos, to cure our lack of sense. When everyone stirs, and the windows open, and the light falls, and everyone who was crooked straightens out, and the panther leaps out of each sweater to land claws out on the phantom in every head. A music will be heard, a flesh pressed up and out by the return of lost attention. And the sport of light in progress plays on the torn membranes, making them cry. All we need now is a pistol, a hat, and some shoes. <laughs> wow. Um, so this is a, it's a sad utopia, yeah, it's, a, it's you know, I, I, I sit at home and project uh, you know, terrors and uh, hopes uh, every every day in some kind of form as a poem or, or a video blog and uh, uh, you know uh, like everyone else uh, I depend on poems I don't quite understand to tell me what's going on <laughs> and, and music Andre you should talk a little bit about your new podcast yeah yeah, yeah. it's three I do it three times a week. I sit in front of my camera and I talk about um, current events that um, uh, I wake up to and it's uh, on YouTube and iTunes and Facebook and then I get people right and it is a thing that uh, seems to be keep, keep a regular schedule of uh, and order in this jumble of thoughts and in this jello of time that we live in. I'm going to post the uh, the uh, link to your homepage, codrescue.com, so people can uh, oh, find thank you. 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 You know, it, you're, you were such a fixture on NPR uh, uh, 15, well, through that stretch in the, the late, in the 90s, I guess. Uh, was that when that hit its peak? Well, I started in 1983, and actually I was there for 30 years, and... Uh, fairly regularly, and, uh, you know, I was protected by my accent because nobody knew what I was saying, and so, not completely, and so I could sneak in wonderful things <laughs> undercover, you know, but when, when they started catching on, because there are now so many proofreaders and interns, you know, they sort of said, this guy is dangerous. And so <laughs> Your Louisiana accent just fooled everybody. Yeah. I, I keep running into people, including people in this podcast who intersect, or this webcast who intersected with you in New Orleans or elsewhere. So you've left a long trail of influence. 
Yeah, the poets, the poets, they're yeah. great. So, so Chiho, what's another song for the moment? It's a Sunday. It's okay. Yeah, early yeah. stages of pandemic pandemonium. Still, we need to recharge our hearts. Well, Every all day. of my songs are. <laughs> They all sort of sound like I'm in quarantine, so I think a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I could play any number of them. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, here's one. Uh, it's called uh, "Angry Kids." happening to them what is happening to them every day you drive the kids to high school they never follow your rules if they did you can't remember anyway and all you ever offer me is questions questions here to tell you now that it's all right it's all right anymore but you don't ever question when it's something you want you're gonna find a way to make it right not working on the hard thing Polished steel and brass strings. The purse strings are the way to your heart. Thank you. Wonderful, Chiho. Yeah, man. Oh, you sounded you. great. And we'll have to thank you you. back. You know, uh, these these sessions are going to go on as long as I <laughs> as long as I can uh, keep up my energy. Uh, it's four times a week right now. I'm not sure that's sustainable. But the, the weekend ones, the Sunday ones, I really got to sustain because it's just too too restorative, too regenerative. Builds cohesion amid all the all the heat and um, and uh, polarization that the internet amplifies. So it's great to have you here, and I'm hoping this is just oh, it's great one to be here. Thank you, Andy. of the Chiho Han <laughs> sessions. And uh, <laughs> David and, and Patrick, we, I think we have time for one more. I see Donna and Rick Nessler in the, in the green room munching on those M&Ms and ha having a pina colada at this hour. Wow. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so we're we're going to play a song by the Steel Drivers, um, uh, oh, and been for Love. Fantastic tune. Never would have hitchhiked to Birmingham if it hadn't been for love. Never would have caught the train to Louisiana if it hadn't been for love. Never would have run through the blinding rain without one dollar to my name if it hadn't been, if it hadn't been for love. 
Never would have seen the trouble that I'm in if it hadn't been for love. Would have been gone like a wayward wind if it hadn't been for love. Nobody knows it better than me. I wouldn't be wishing I was free if it hadn't been, if it hadn't been for love. Four cold walls against my will. At least I know she's lying still. Four cold walls without parole. Lord have mercy on my soul. Never would have gone on that side of town if it hadn't been for love. Never would have had the mind to track her down if it hadn't been for love. Never would have loaded up a 44 and put myself behind a jailhouse door if it hadn't been, if it hadn't been for love. Four cold walls again my will at least I know she's lying still for go all without parole Lord have mercy on my soul Never would have hitchhiked to Birmingham if it hadn't been for love. Never would have caught the train to Louisiana if it hadn't been for love. Never would have loaded up a 44 and put myself behind a jailhouse door if it hadn't been, if it hadn't been for love. If it hadn't been, if it hadn't been for love. If it hadn't been, if it hadn't been for love. If it hadn't been, if it hadn't been for love. Fantastic. One of our favorite tunes to do together, again, when we are able to be together. Uh, I'm going to introduce a couple of people who are in the green room, and then we're going to have a transition to uh, the next heap of wonderful creative people here. And if we were actually on our phones, that'd be great. Good to see you back on the land again. Getting a lot of... Uh, there we go. All right. So, yeah, so David and uh, Patrick, great to have you here this morning. Chi Ho Han. Han Guitars over Newburgh, great initial guest. You'll be back, I guarantee. Andre Kodrescu, and you can all hang out, man. Hang out in the back room, in the front room. Uh, we want to see Joseph's studio. That'll yeah, be fun. I know. Yeah. I know. David, I'm really interested to get your reaction to Joseph Rosano's work. Joseph got up super early. He's out in Seattle right now at a uh, at a wow. glass factory uh, uh, gallery yeah. in Seattle. Um, yeah, great to have you here. And Rick and Donna Nessler in the cat in the Catskills, not out on your sailboat. Oh my God, how could that be? Uh, can I do, can I go out in the boat instead? Maybe I'll just drive the car down to uh, wherever you keep it. And so, uh, so again, th so thanks, David, and thanks, uh, uh, Chiho, Chiho and, and, and Patrick. Patrick. And, uh, yeah. Andre. We'll be watching. We'll Thank uh, you. Hold on. Let me, let's, let's just get, get this uh, set up for the next round. round. And, and Joseph, Joseph I, do, you do you have, have um, um, earbuds, earbuds in? in? I don't have earbuds in. I I have uh, something similar. I can try them. I think when I'm we try them, I'm getting a little bit of, of a feedback, feedback loop, but I, I, can I can also silence myself. myself Let's between. see. Let's see. It's great, it's great that, you that you could get, get up early, early and, and be here. here. Well, thank you for the opportunity. And I'm going to show, show a, a little, little bit of, of your work, work in the meantime. meantime. Let's see, see here. here. How do, How do I turn, I turn off that? Is that better? Hold on one, one second. second. It's, it's still, still there. there but, but 
Rick and Donna, Donna are, are you? you? You're okay. You're okay. Right. You've been here a lot. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll work, work it out. I'll just wait I'm not asking a question. There is, there is a, there's a big, big thing going, going on, on here. here. So, so let's, let's start, start with, with um, art. Art. I want to just get, a, get a, something, something on the screen, on the screen here. here. Where is, Where is it? it? Hold on. Yeah, here, here we go. We go. Hold, on Hold on one second. second. Hold on, Hold one, on one more second. second. Give me a Give second. Me a second. So Joseph, so Joseph, can you walk, can you walk us, through us through a little bit about, about, about your, your work, work in general? general and, and, and I'm going to mute myself, myself so, we so we don't have, have the echo. echo. Yes, uh, I'd, I'd love to, to do that. First of all, I, I wanted to thank you all for having me on today. And I also wanted to thank uh, the Pilchuck Glass School for allowing me to use their space from which to, to do this broadcast. We, we tried this at my studio. I think it was on Thursday. And um, I had pretty horrible Wi-Fi. So... Um, I'm down here where we're doing the where we're doing this this installation of this piece in process. But um, so I wanted to thank you know I wanted to thank Ben Wright, the art director, and uh, Donna Davies from the school here. Uh, she's the deputy director for giving me this opportunity. Uh, my process and, and what I do is really um, I I try to create stories about what's happening in the natural world, things that have happened in the natural world, and uh, bring community communities of makers into, into that dialogue and in a variety of ways, from um, you know helping me make the piece uh, or pieces to um, helping craft the narrative. And sometimes that involves bringing scientists into the, into the, um, into the story to talk about things of which I'm not an expert, you know, so um, that's that's the basis of how I do what I do. Unmute me, Andy. 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 Your, your work, work draws, draws a, lot a lot on your connection, the issues surrounding uh, conservation of um, other species especially this piece. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to unmute you in a second so we can uh, get your thoughts on that. How, what connected you with, you know, we, art can be about anything. It can be about these extraordinary human challenges we face, poverty, race, uh, violence. Uh, it can be about the violence of nature. What, what drew your attention to the things that you focus on? You're talking to me? earbuds are not working. Anyhow, uh, you know, you asked me the question earlier, you know, was it nature first or was it, you know, art first? And um, I'm just uh, reminded by my mom, you know, the first thing that came out of my mouth was see bird fly or something like that. So obviously nature was the first thing that, that you know, that sort of struck me and, and it stuck with me. Um, you know, I, I try to tell stories about difficult things. And um, sometimes when you do that with art, it's, it's difficult to, um, you know, get people to sort of, you know, buy into the story. Um, I've lived in the Pacific Northwest for 32 years. And in that 32 year time span, I have um, watched things go away. And growing up in New York, I grew up on, on Long Island and I spent large periods of time in the Catskills. I was sort of indoctrinated into being comfortable in the woods so that when I came out here and I was a more mature individual, I could um, see things change. And that informs the vast majority of what I do because I recognize that that change happens wherever you are in the world and, and, and in whatever ecosystem um, you're looking at. I just had to unmute myself. Um... That the, could you describe the, this work in progress that you've got going? And maybe I'm not sure if you're in a position to walk around a little bit and show it, but that would be cool too. Oh yeah, yeah. So so um, the piece of the the piece that's out here is a piece called Ivory, and it's really an exploration of how we value we being human beings value the natural world, and um, so. 
I recognize that, um, and I'm, I'm very, I, I was always inspired by going to the American Museum of Natural History and seeing, you know, these, these fossils of, of, uh, of um, you know, um, dinosaurs, et cetera. And I recognized, you know, I'm not a scientist, uh, although I work with a lot of scientists, I recognize that um, things have gone away over time. So why have they gone away over time? How do we value, how do we value the natural world? So uh, the idea to create an installation with some people that were experts uh, in this, in a variety of disciplines, anthropologists, archeologists, paleontologists, conservationist, how do we talk about um, this, this relationship to the natural world, uh, you know, primarily 10,000 years ago to the present. So the idea to play with um, this reality that, uh, that um, roughly uh, 200 elephant tusks, both Asian and African elephant tusks are illegally harvested each, each day. And um, so how do we, talk about that reality and how it informs the value that we have for a prestigious animal like the elephant um, throughout time. Does that make sense? Yeah. What I'm, I mean, and, and, and if you have any questions. So, so this room that we're in right now is a mock-up for an exhibit that will ultimately have no less than 400 pieces of ivory. It'll have 200 pieces of, of um, elephant ivory and it, 200 pieces of mastodon and mammoth ivory made out of glass. And um, so everything in this exhibit talks about how we value, or is connected to a story about how we value, um, you know, our planet and the things on it. And I don't know how well you can see, but so yeah, there, are good. there are stories that are playing out, you know, from the Pleistocene to the, pre to the present. There's some Pleistocene vultures and a saber-toothed cat and the saber-toothed cat is coming in, and, and you know, obviously, they're 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 being contentious over a kill that he's looking at, and that's sort of what's in the middle of the room. Mm. So, in the middle of the room, you have this wow. the beginning the beginning of this installation. Here, this is 50 pieces of ivory that have been uh, blown and silvered, and you know, and I work with a team of people, and each team is different, and it's really important. Um, so I think we have 50 pieces of ivory here, elephant. Can, and you, tip the, can you tip the computer down a little bit yep. so that more? Wow. So we have, so this is mostly elephant and uh, walrus. And I've made some, some other things that will be included in the, in the larger exhibit. You know, Incredible. So this, this ultimately, when we show this in its entirety, there will be a very large slab of, of you know, salvaged wood. Um, itself a relic of some, you know, um, min primeval time. And it, presiding over it are these, these creatures rendered in tar. And I look wow. at that as sort of the primordial ooze from which so much of us, so much of who we are comes from. So, you know, the scientific component to this is that, I, as I said, I, I'm not a scientist and, and I'm not certainly not a DNA scientist, but up on the top left corner is is the DNA sequence of of a human being, and above it is the huh. the, the Latin name of the of the uh, animal that's that's no longer here. Right. And um, the entire image is framed by um, a construction crate. So everything in this room is repurposed in some way. It came from some other thing. These are horned gophers. And you can see you know, the, the, um, the, the crating is right, right, right. unpainted. And I've left all of the, you know, all of the, uh, the insignias from the different manufacturers on the, on the pieces. Wow. That's remarkable. Um, and that, how do you create those uh, faux ivory tusks and the like? You said that's a glass blowing process? Yeah. So... So um, at the glass school every year, there, is, uh, there, there are five to six programs during the regular season and they, and they run between two to three weeks. And during that time, uh, 
teachers come from around the world to teach a different discipline in glass making. And while they're working with students, there are master craftsmen who are professional glass makers also from various parts of the world. Now, I was the artist in resident, um, professional artist in resident, uh, the last session last year at the school. And I worked with a team of women glass makers, uh, Madeline Proud and Alexis Cannon. And um, they made these, these tusks with the assistance of a couple of other friends, Pat Davidson and Tom Probanish and Daniel Brensinger and um, Andy Lawrence, and of course, Todd Horton. So these pieces are quite literally a bubble. You, you literally, it's like super elastic bubble plastic. You take, uh, you gather up your, the, the bubble and then you um, heat it up and you pull a point and you literally let it drop until it's in the shape you want it and then wow. you hold it sideways and give it a curve. I, Andy, I think you, I think Bradley sent you the, um, the, the draft prospectus and there, there are some images of, of the team making these pieces. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this is this is wonderful right now. I don't want to interrupt the flow because what we're seeing is really, really captivating. So the tusks are, I think the biggest tusk here is about four feet. Um, we'll probably make them as long as eight feet when we do the actual full-blown installation. Um, and the pieces are then silvered after the, uh, after the, um, they come out of what is called an annealing oven. You know, just like when you're sitting by the campfire and the rocks get hot and then you pour water on them, you know how they crack? Well, it's the same process with the glass. If you do not cool it down uh, evenly over a long period of time, it will blow up. And, you know, with the sun on the, the glass that's on the floor that uh, some of the tusks are resting in, it has not been annealed. So as the sun hits it coming in the room right now, I'm hearing little things of things popping. In fact, I'll give you an example. When we when we put this up, when we put this together on on um, Thursday or not Thursday, yeah, whatever day it was, yeah, Thursday, this big piece of crystal wow. was whole. Now it's see how it's fractured. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. So then you can see the parts where it's, where it's broken off in, in the pile. So, yeah, the, the exhibit is, is uh, huh. evolving as we sit here. That's but remarkable. It, but I think the thing that, um, you know, I'll put the camera here. Maybe we can. Yeah, and if you could crouch down, then uh, that's great. Come on yeah. into the screen. Yeah. So. That's fair. Yeah, so as I said, I work with teams. The team involved in this piece uh, consists of uh, Jack Sang from UC Berkeley and the American Museum of Natural History and Ben Morwick from uh, University of Washington. He's, a, he's an anthropologist, Jack's a paleontologist. And then Ivan Carter, who's a conservationist from Zimbabwe. And then a team, the team of glassmakers that I've already, de already described. So this first iteration is Put together we'll take you know take pictures of it and formulate a narrative so that we can go to the next step of making you know the, the 400 tusks or or more pieces of ivory so i thought that uh you know, since we respond in you know in the way i work i respond to you know the input from experts you know i thought that maybe we could make you all part of the team today and you could you can uh, ask me some questions and you know maybe tell me some stuff i should think about because i really want people to um i want people's my understanding of our you know relationship and valuation uh to maybe be changed by what they see when they come in this room um so wow that's a fascinating uh uh, call to the public, um, and that's a rare thing. I think the more that museums and uh, science and artists have that en that engagement with audiences during a work in progress, the better uh, the better everything is because you get that live dynamic co production of of creativity. Uh, in science now, there's a whole push for co production of knowledge, where scientists work with city planners, for example, mm -hmm. on how to build a more resilient city, and it's literally a conversation. And what you're talking about is applying that same tactic to uh, 
art. So that's pretty cool. Hold on, I'm gonna just I'm, I'm actually posting your question on on Twitter right now. Yeah, you can. And so, here we go. So the world the world is part of the team right now, you know, and that's and that's fine. Um, I look for. I mean, who knows what you're going to get? But if you don't ask, you know, you get nothing, right? So, right, right, right. Um, but uh, well, I'm gonna bring in. Let's see. I'm gonna have uh, Rick and Donna come in and see if they have some questions. Hold on. Sure. For you before they do a song uh, so rick uh, nestler you're, you've been involved in uh, conservation and the arts meaning through music for decades through clearwater and being on the boat the sloop and you know you've seen lots of species in peril the american shad the uh the atlantic um, sturgeon our hudson river is coming back very very slowly from some devastation so rick any ideas about uh joseph's uh, call there or what's your reaction to the work you've seen so far Oh, sorry. I, I, I think I muted you. Hold on. Or you have to unmute yourself. And <laughs> there we go. Hey, Donna. Donna, I was just asking you guys for your thoughts on what you're seeing. Uh, Joseph, as an artist, is calling out to the community of art ingesters, the public, to um, with questions on how to proceed with um, planning how to, how to display the work, you know, sort of a, when you look, think about this idea of replication of relics like ivory tusks, um, any ideas come to mind? And I was explaining that both of you have worked for decades as Clearwater Voices, uh, connecting the arts and, and conservation as well. Well, we've also worked as educators for Clearwater right. too. So, <clears throat> and in that capacity, I've, I've seen, uh, a lot of invasive species which are pushing out the the native species so there might be i've i've had people discuss the fact that uh, invasive species are actually part of nature i've heard that argument uh it's it's hard to uh sort of freeze nature in a moment of time so um, there's a natural progression at times uh, when various species invade other uh, ecosystems and then um, push out what we consider the native species. So there might be a timeline along the way um, of showing what you have at one point where you have, say, woolly mammoths and things like that, and then they give way to elephants, what would take over the ecosystem after that? Because eventually each of those species becomes invasive at some point. And of course, so the, the question is, is what came before and what will come after? So some some kind of a temporal map of the light could be yeah, part of it. Yeah, like a uh, timeline. Interesting. Donna, what do you think when you look at this pile of uh, synthetic of glass replicas of ivory tusks lost of species that are lost or, or vanishing? Wow. Um, first off, the art, the, the skill to do it, that, that blows me away. And jumping in uh, on what Rick was saying, uh, I just finished reading Michael Crichton's State of Fear. And oh, wow. he discusses a lot, you know, he includes a lot of, well, yeah, you want to preserve, but preserve what? It wasn't like that before you decided to preserve it and you can't keep it in, in the same state. So I would go along with that and I would include um, the fauna, uh, excuse me, the flora also, because the elephants eat different foods and they would end up changing the, the landscape that way too. So Joseph, any initial thoughts on that? And I see a great question coming in from Amy Lipton, who is a longtime curator. Uh, she ran uh, Eco Art Space, which is a 20 year old um, uh, enterprise around uh, environment art, but I'll, I'll save her question for next. So any quick thoughts? Yeah, I mean, the initial thought is that uh, by drawing the parallel between the mastodon and the African elephant, and then these animals that are on their that are either extinct or on their way out. I mean, I think there's Pleistocene bison and a dire wolf and a 
Snow Leopard and others that I will have in the overall, in, in the larger exhibit. The question is, how do human, you know, how does, how is Homo sapiens sapien uh, an invasive species? And how, how have we changed the world to sort of continue to sustain us? And, that, and that's changed throughout time. Like our relationship with nature has changed throughout time, how we value it. Um, so I, I'm very interested in, I mean, of course, Donna is right. Things are going to change and the next thing will come. And uh, extinction is a part of, is a part of, you know, uh, basic biology. So it really comes down to value. And I think it's, I've looked at some studies where it talks about how certain, the, the species that have remained, that can be cultivated for our, you know, sustenance are the things that are still here, both in uh, domesticated form and in wild form. I think that's, that's part of the question, you know, how do we look at that? So, uh, Don and Rick, um, do you have a song? Before we get to Amy Lipton's question, I want to see if there's a song. Uh, it doesn't have to be about endangered species, but <laughs> no. what, what are you thinking about? Uh, and it doesn't have to have a Zydeco tie in it. Okay. <laughs> this time. <laughs> no. Well, um, I've been thinking uh, a lot lately about... Uh, everything that's been going on in the political world and uh really yep i've been on my boat <laughs> i got this song that uh steve earl recorded it's called uh the hammer song for great pete song. great song One of these days, I'm going to lay this hammer down. I won't have to drag this weight around. When there ain't no hunger and there ain't no pain, I won't have to swing this thing. One of these days, I'm going to lay this hammer down. One of these nights, I'm going to sing a different tune. All night long beneath the silver moon When there ain't no hunger and there ain't no war I won't have to sing no more One of these days I'm gonna sing a different tune Yeah. 
is hammering. He always sang this song. One of these days I'm going to lay this hammer down. I won't have to drag this weight around. When there ain't no hunger and there ain't no pain, I won't have to swing this thing. One of these days I'm going to lay this hammer down. One of these days I'm going to lay this hammer down. I do love that tune. Another one we used to play all together in the same place at the same time. <laughs> and we will get to do that. We will do that again. We will do that again. We will do that again. We shall persevere. And uh, we got to thank Steve Earl for writing such a great tune about our dear departed friend, Pete Seeger, who I think we all think of at least once a week, maybe even more frequently <laughs> these times. What would Pete say? You know, what would Pete do? What would Toshi do right now? <laughs> ah! Well, we had Reggie Harris on here. Before. I, I, I played the recording of his tune from a few weeks ago. We will not rest. You know, there's a lot of work to be done going forward. Uh, Claudia Gibson has entered the studio, and I'll bring her on in a moment. Joseph Rosano, there was a question from Amy Lipton, the great art curator and uh, artist facilitator uh, related to your work. She, she asked you a practical question. What's the medium in your paintings? Uh, it looks like graphite, or is it paint? It's actually tar. Tar. Oh, that's, I like that. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. So it's, uh, it is tar and it's, it is both a byproduct of, you know, the petroleum industry and, um, at least this tar. And, um, I don't know, it's sort of, it sort of pays homage to the primal ooze from which we all have come in a sort of metaphorical way. But yeah, so it's, it's everything is, you know, this, or, as I said, everything, that you see has been repurposed in some way. And this was roofing tar, yeah. And on your bigger question a little while ago, I tweeted while you were talking about that intersection of science and art. Uh, you mentioned UC Berkeley and the Museum of Natural History. Uh, I'd love to, if there's a template, if there's a way that that creativity, that creative ferment there and what you're seeking to do with your, your community, your audience, if we can keep track of that going forward, there might be some lessons there for other artists and, and scientists and how to connect. A big chunk of what I do on, on the Monday part of this broadcast, webcast, is to, those, those Monday episodes are called Thriving Online, and they're all about ways to connect the arts, sciences, communication, and other skills and attributes and tools in ways that can foster progress amid a whether it's the uh, pandemic or uh, the extinction crisis or climate change, those intersections are critical. So I'm hoping we can keep in touch with you going forward. It's and hang in there, stay where you are. I love, I love. There'll be a couple. I'm going to bring back Andre Kudrescu now, and and uh, Claudia Gibson is here from Wimberley, Texas, to say hi and to contribute some musical uh, uh, creativity to our our morning <laughs> no talking heads. Uh, effort here. Claudia, how are you doing? Oh, it's been a little crazy, but um, I've been nursing a sick cat. So um, for the past couple of weeks, very, very sick. Um, yeah. So I've been kind of, and then running around trying to do everything else. And you saw me like scrambling. I just got back from walking my dog and it's hot out. So I'm, I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah, it's way up in the mid upper 90s here in the Hudson Valley today, too. Yeah, I felt a little For you, cooler. it's kind of like, okay, yeah, it's really but hot. Things... Here, it's like, oh, shoot, it's really hot things are better. Um, I think in Texas, people are finally like, there's more people starting to accept the reality. There's still, you know, there's still um, a pandemic and there's still people yeah. who are resisting it. But I sense a shift and I see that more um, in the policies. Um, I work at a high school in the, in the Austin ISD district. And at first we were being told, you know, that we're going to be back in person. And now, um, the uh, TEA, the Texas Education Agency, has said, no, it can, you know, four weeks and it can be longer. And so I think now it's, it's shifting more towards science, which is good. I mean, we still have some people in the state who, who you know, 
We have Dan Patrick as our lieutenant governor, and I'm not going to get political. I'm just going to say he believes maybe less in science than in, in other things. So, um, yeah, thank you for putting that up. I had something I was going to send to you, so I'm glad you're, There's I'm glad you're up on it. Oh, my God. No, I've been paying it's close It's been attention. getting bad. Yeah, just as bad as New York in, in, you know, as New York was in March um, in Houston and in um, Dallas and San Antonio. I mean, it's just – and I'm reading some, you know, <clears throat> that was that was a – a really touching article. I'm getting goosebumps just looking at it. Um, there was another yeah. thing up on Twitter that I'd had um, about a um, an ICU nurse saying, you know, they feel forgotten. You know, in New York, it was, you know, the big thing for a couple months. They, everyone would come up and clap. And and a lot of, um, right. I think a lot of the healthcare workers feel, you know, that they're, they are doing what they were made to do and they're dedicated. And, um, but they kind of feel like, you know, with, with people doing crazy things and saying it's personal freedom and, and just, you know, sort of um, yeah. poo-pooing science, I, I think it must be very, very discouraging. You know, I'm a lay person and I find it discouraging. And Well, it must know, be hard for you because, well, Texas is basically, one thing, that, one thing that's so hard for me, and whether it's earthquake risk, pandemic risk, the lack of transference of knowledge. Like New right. York went through this epic tragic surge that th does everyone have to replicate the same surge well and it's yeah. the same thing with earthquakes i've written countless stories about earthquake risk and it seems like one community doesn't learn from the other earth and actually tornado country too the same thing well Moore, and, oklahoma was yeah. devastated by f5 tornado and 90 miles away is uh norman oklahoma mm -hmm. the home of the national center for severe storms studies they don't have a building code. Finally, more put in a building code after they had so many devastating d deaths and injuries. It's yeah. like, can we get? Can we kind of grow up? It feels like a big part of the question. I think that is, and you know, I mean, I had that song I played last week. You know, I had that line. When do the grown ups show up? And it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, I think uh, one of the great things about Texans, and and one of the you know exasperating things about Texans can be, you know, very independent and learn the hard way. Um, yeah. But I think now it's I, I just sense a shift and, and this, there's nothing scientific behind this. But usually when I've kind of, you know, stick my finger in the air and say, what's going on around here? Um, I sense a shift to more, you know, looking at, hey, we have to deal with this scientifically. I even sense that, you know, from the governor who now, um, you know, Austin is looking at putting in a, a fines for not wearing masks. And the governor yeah. is indicating he may not oppose that. So before it was always you know, oh, well, uh, right. if Austin gets a little too, you know, liberal, um, you know, they, they ban plastic bags, then the state legislators said, no, you can't do that. <laughs> so now it's kind of, you know, um, I think it's shifting, which is good. So, but so, I've been thinking uh, about that. What, what, what song were you thinking about playing this morning? Well, here's a song I was thinking played. It's a sad song, so I apologize in advance for that. <laughs> But um, one of the, the most heart-rending things I've been reading and that um, just recently happened too, the, the school I work in, we lost a, um, a longtime staff member, um, very dedicated, lovely man, custodian to COVID-19 just this past week. And the ritual of gathering and funeral and, and visitation that you know we humans find comforting in, in times of loss, we haven't been able to have that. And... Um, so I have a song that sort of touches on that a little bit. It's about, and also about just getting in your car and taking a journey. You know, what a luxury. Um, I can't go and visit my son in New York right now. I'd have to probably quarantine. So um, anyway, this one, this song is called Cleveland, Ohio, and it has nothing to do with Cleveland. <laughs> just passing through. And you know what, Andy? I just realized <laughs> as I'm as I'm playing this, um, I haven't been playing the last few days. I've been like up all night with a cat, and I am I'm forgetting words. So um, it's okay. really embarrassing. <laughs> do, do you want to pu pu pull up another one? Um, yeah, I could. Or if you want to have someone else talk for a minute, I can just pull up my words well, because yeah, I've played that, this yeah. song like ten thousand times. Uh, and, believe um, me, I do, I do the same thing all the time. Uh, 
So Andre, uh, you know, I was thinking about you when yeah. when um, Claudia was talking about the surge when we were just talking about the surge Texas is experience right now, because I remember you talking about this sort of like the sequence of sirens. There was the surge of sirens during the peak of the COVID-19 emergency. And then there was a surge of sirens as Queens and Brooklyn and other places were erupting in social unrest around uh, race and equality. Um, so w w setting that aside, what, what else were you thinking of? Well, here in New York, uh, I was able to go out for uh, dinner outside the restaurant in uh, Bay Ridge uh, for the first time with my friend Linnea. And uh, while waiting for the food, which took a long time, uh, we uh, wrote a poem. And so it's a short poem. So I'll read it to you because it is part of the tension that was all around us because you could feel the edge, you know, the people going by and, and looking. And it was. It was about the art we are making. Now it says our artistic board had Zoom caviar and met for the first time in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Between bursts of inspiration on projects that never came to be, they chomped imaginary bites from dishes Russian ballerinas had, had once thrown up in, but not before their escorts drank champagne from their shoes. Toe shoes turned combats black, steel toed their way toward the crutch of the matter, demise, default, decompensation, and whatever else you can flatten on a screen, including the sweat of attention increasing drop by drop from being close to the mystery of poets who said a tight lipped goodbye in the only words suitable to the occasion leave your million dollar body in the hat for the real dinner we will have later. <laughs> Referring really mainly to the fact that the Zoom things are wonderful, but uh, they're really, uh, they're breakfast and brunches that, uh, without food. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, there's a certain, um, I mean, I've had moments on this webcast that are truly heart swelling, where you do, you kind of want to grab the person, but there's nothing like the intimacy that comes with being in the same space and reading all those little signals. And, uh, we yeah, all long for that. Um, hey, Claudia, you're okay, or are you ready? For yeah, I'm good. I, I grabbed my brain cell that had that <laughs> part of the. <laughs> I love and it. I should know it because this song has a funny history. It, it was um, the first line is um, it's part of a, a prompt that I was assigned, and uh, which is Cleveland, Ohio, 10 a.m. on a Thursday morning, and so, and my but I said Cleveland, Ohio, and my brain just went. You remember the old test patterns yes. that used to come on at like three in the morning, you know, yeah. on, on broadcast TV? Yeah, it's kind of like that. <laughs> Donna's laughing. Yeah, she's been there. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to play this song for you. And hopefully, um, if you hear me doing a mm mm mm, um, just be forgiving because uh, my Got poor it. little 12 pound cat Edward is, um, he's, he's having a fight of his life right now. So uh, that's what I've been doing. Checked out of my motel and I went for a walk. The lakefront is quiet except for men fishing. They stand on the dark side and cast their line down and talk. How Youngstown, Ohio 
the state line by lunchtime. Grabbed some coffee at the quick mart and found the talk radio. The callers are angry. They say they're forgotten. Though my reasons are different. to stretch on for days I count all the small towns and miles Water Gap into Jersey and the suburban haze But the New York City skyline that's a sight for sore eyes Hoboken Jersey. It's 6 p.m. Thursday. I park the car by the ferry and I boarded that boat. Halfway across the Hudson, took a box from my backpack. I shook out your ashes. Very Thank sweet. You. So uh, we have a few more minutes here, 10 or so minutes. I'd love to get one more from Rick and Donna before uh, we go. And if you have one and uh, then we'll swing back and get some, a few more thoughts from Joseph Rosano out at Pilchuck Gallery. They have an exhibition space in Seattle, which went which was the earliest city in America to go through the COVID surge. And uh, and then uh, maybe some closing thoughts if we can fit them in from Claudia too. So uh, Rick and Donna, you got one more tune before this hot day gets goes forward. Oh, that's that's why I'm here not on the boat because it no wind and too hot. So <laughs> came it. home. But maybe next week we might have Wi Fi down at the at the boat club. So Oh yeah. I from the boat. Love that. Maybe we can do the show from there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have that Go to broadband, but we, we, okay. we can try. All my life's a circle, sunrise and sundown. Moon rolls through the night time till the daybreak comes around. All my life's a circle, still I wonder why. Season spinning round again. Years keep rolling by. I've met you a thousand times. Guess you've done the same. Then we lose each other. 
It's like the children's game. Now I find you here again. Thought runs through my mind. Our love is like a circle. Let's go round one more time. All my life's a circle. Sunrise and sundown. Moon rolls through the night tide till the daybreak comes around. All my life's a circle. Still I wonder why. Seasons spinning round again. Years keep rolling by. I've met you a thousand times, guess you've done the same. Then we lose each other, it's like a children's game. Now I find you here again, thought runs through my mind. Our love is like a circle, let's go around one more time. Only this time, because I forgot the other part. All my life's a circle, sunrise and sundown. Moon rolls through the night time till the daybreak comes around. All my life's a circle, still I wonder why. Seasons spinning round again, years keep rolling by. The years keep rolling by. So, Claudia, it's contagious. <laughs> there it is. Here and gone. By the way, what do you teach? Oh, I'm a I'm a high school librarian. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sometimes middle school either. social studies teacher for 33 years. <laughs> oh my goodness! No, I've only it's actually I used to I used to work at Garrison, but I wasn't I was just going to to grad school then. But um, yeah. Very cool. And I'm so, really jealous of all this talk about sailing on the Hudson. I miss that so. Oh, much. I'm on Long Island Sound. Uh, Even oh, better. you're on Long Island Sound. Well, that's not too shabby either. So. Believe me. Well, I spent a year and a half living on a sailboat going two thirds of the way around the world when I was a young a youngster. And the Hudson is not a sailable river. It's on the clear hard. water, yes, but <laughs> but not really you know, it's a it's just too ribbon like. Yeah. Well my dad had a little putt putt boat, so from the time I, I was know. We 12, need a horizon. We to, really need a horizon yeah. to sail, really. So Joseph Rosano, I want to circle back one more time to the world of visual art and uh, what's your takeaway here? And um, what do you think in hearing these tunes and what's on your agenda with your art next? Well, I mean, I, I, the tunes remind me of, actually they're making me, they're making me smile. My father was a big Pete Seeger fan, you know, so, and, and I grew up in New York in the, in the sixties. And uh, I remember watching him on TV and uh, how it was being played around the house. So, the you know the sort of processed nature of the songs is actually quite comforting so so that's you know that makes me feel good as far as what's going on in the future um you know i think you have a video of the other project that i'm working on school i think that's two and a half minutes and i don't know whether we want to get into that now but um it does actually talk about how you merge science and art i'm working with the smithsonian and uh and a DNA lab called Joan Adventures to work with uh, at-risk youth and uh, disenfranchised youth to catalog a river system through environmental DNA. And as far as this show is concerned, um, the Traver Gallery is partnering with me on, on, on making this available to people. So if you want to come in and see it, you can contact uh, Sarah Traver at the gallery and she'll bring you in. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, if you want to do the, if you wanted to show that Vimeo video by well, Shane gonna, Anderson. We don't have time to show the whole video, but this gives a good sense of the project, at least the aspects of it. Um, I'll post the link um, on yeah. social media in several places so that people can have a look and they can go to rosanostudio.com is a great place to uh, learn more as well. But it's great to see, again, that what you were talking about there is something that the Earth Institute is working a lot on, which is that education outreach component around science and uh, again around arts. We're trying to mesh the arts and sciences. My, my, my initiative here on communication and sustainability, a big chunk of what we were working on early was projects with The Shed, which is a big new um, art space in New York City with um, Maya Lin, the artist, um, to try to build that, that engagement between data and artistry and publics of various kinds. So it's, it's fantastic to see what you're doing. Well, we can talk more about this later. I mean, as it relates to the Earth Institute, I would love to. So. We'll follow up for sure. Yeah, yeah. And let's end with a little more music. Um, I might offer a song if that's okay. It's a, it's a goofy one, which I hardly ever play. But it's it, your show. You're allowed to do it. Oh, I suppose so. <laughs> I, just, I love Goofy. I'm a, you know, I, I was a story, you know, basically as a journalist, I was telling other people's stories for them, essentially, for so long. And now I'm more interested in helping to convey other people's stories. But here is a song I wrote a long, long time ago about mortality. It's, it's called Skeptic in Heaven. And um, let me see if I can, uh, I'll actually put myself on. I don't like to do this, but here we go. Spent all my life a doubter, skeptic through and through, till I found myself in heaven one fine day. Don't know how I got here, seems you can't recall your end, but here I am and I still am amazed. Everyone is smiling, happy as a clam, we all share a look of slight surprise. Even lifelong believers are somehow shocked to find that heaven really is a paradise. quite spectacular you can see the grand design you can finally see the forest for the trees down on earth they're running around like frantic little ants they should relax the afterlife's a breeze everyone is smiling happy as a clam we all share a look of slight surprise even lifelong believers are somehow shocked to find that heaven really is a paradise. Way, way down you can make out a different destination, a place for those who did not make the grade. But up here we nibble angel cake, the choir is divine, life in heaven is one big parade. Everyone is smiling, happy as a clam. We all share a look of slight surprise. Even lifelong believers are somehow shocked to find that heaven really is. Well, heaven really is. Heaven really is a paradise. There you go. It begs the philosophical question, can a clam really be happy? <laughs> happy as a clam. That is them. So it's 12 o'clock noon here on the East Coast. Um, we could go a little longer, but I think, I think we've had a good morning here. Yeah. This was a wonderful morning. Good luck with your cat, Claudia. We all, Aww, those of us you. who are pet owners and animal lovers, um, uh, know those special relationships are 
They're in some ways as powerful as the ones we have with humans, if, if not more so. Sometimes it feels like Rick and Donna, happy sailing, happy, happy cooling, <laughs> wherever you are. Joseph Rosano, thank you so much for taking us on a tour of that spectacular oh, work in progress beautiful. in Seattle. And let's just come back and visit again as this evolves. And I'd love to do perhaps a conversation with you and a couple of the scientists you're working with as one of the Monday sessions on how to connect arts and sciences. That would be a cool thing. Um, let me make sure you're unmuted. And Andre Codrescu, keep on being who you are <laughs> and well, sharing that you. with the world. Collaboration is the key for me now. So that poem I read, I wrote to Linnea, you couldn't tell who, it, who was who, but I would love to collaborate with uh, artists, uh, environmentalists, scientists. I'll put out the word, I'll put out the word. And the church bells are ringing in the local corner here in Nelsonville, this tiny village uh. of 600 people. Yeah, I know. Claudia used to be part of our it. Phillipstown community. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to close out with a little boilerplate and hang in there a little, everybody here for one second. So sustain what, which is this thing you've been watching. This is the Sunday No Talking Heads version. Sustain what is a global online conversation identifying solutions to the complicated, shape-shifting, and epic challenges of humanity's great acceleration. It's the last half century or so and the great pause we're experiencing, the great tragedy of this current moment. A prime focus is making sense of and getting the most out of the planet's fast forward information environment, the one Earth system changing faster than the actual biogeophysical environment around us. We are all connected by this. It can change the world for better or worse. And let's hope we can tip that toward the better. This webcast is produced as part of my work building Columbia University's new Earth Institute initiative on communication and sustainability my daily goal is how do you make information and connect and, and connections matter? As soon as we're done, share the link you've been watching on with friends and circles far and wide. Uh, see the scrolling info at the bottom of the screen to get in touch with me uh, with ideas for this show. And uh, stu stay tuned on Monday, which is tomorrow at 1 p.m. I'm doing one of these thriving online sessions with a woman at Penn America, which is an authors and writers uh, guild who is training people how to withstand online harassment. And wow. I guarantee you know what it, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's how to help others and yourself uh, withstand and defend against online harassment. That's tomorrow, Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern. And Wednesday, another session with uh, showing a, a great group project on urban development in, in uh, parts of Africa and Israel. Friday, we're doing a session on the World Health Organization's uh, finale to a two week meeting they've had on what they call infodemiology, which is studying the infodemic that surrounds the pandemic. So that's Friday. And next Sunday, a very special version of this Sunday session, we're gonna have a play. We're gonna have a play performed live on multiple screens. Uh, the play is Other Than We, it was written by Karen Melpede, a very uh, brave and pioneering playwright whose work oh, yeah. I wrote on about in the New York Times some years ago. She, her, her recent play, which debuted just before this uh, disaster hit us, is about the future of humans and biology and climate all mangled into a fascinating story. So uh, on a week from Sunday, I mean, a week from today, you can watch that play live 1030 to 1230 here. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here today, uh, contributors, including those who were here earlier. And thanks to you for watching out there in the world. And that's the Thank end you, Andy. Bye. Say hi to Lisa.